Neil McCutcheon, Five Minutes Outside with Kale. I brought my family today. We're going to talk about archery and the archery trail at Pinecrest or somewhere, Methodist property. And Dad's going to ask us some questions about archery. All right. Thank you, Kale. Uh, yes, at the Pinecrest Archery Trail, our community archery range here in Spencer, West Virginia, we have 40 targets. and. Uh, it offers a variety of things to do for families and individuals and folks that enjoy bow hunting. So I have with me today <coughs> Katie McCutcheon. Excuse me. Excuse you, Katie McCutcheon. Okay. So Katie McCutcheon, and I have with me Callie McCutcheon, and of course, Five Minutes Outside with Kale. And we brought Mama McCutcheon and Cheryl McCutcheon, who also does archery as by evidence with her bow on the table. So uh, a whole family full of bows and archery. So let's start off a little bit. We'll talk about uh, a little bit about getting outside and having fun. We had a wonderful weekend of weather. We went out to the archery range, and uh, while I worked on targets and stuff, you guys got to shoot. So uh, what do you think? Did you have a really good time out into the out with the good weather this weekend, Katie? Yep. And who got to go out and shoot with you this weekend? Um, Grandma and Pap Pap. Okay, yep, we had some family in from Pittsburgh, and uh, we got to go uh, out to the archery range. Kelly, uh, what did you think of the weather, and what was your favorite part of stomping around in the woods a little bit? Um, I liked the weather, and the favorite part was going around and getting fresh air. Okay, that sounds great, getting outside after a long winter, getting some fresh air and a nice day. We all got a little bit of sunburn, so made it really nice. So let's talk a little bit about parts of the bow. And uh, this weekend we shot a lot of archery. So, Katie, tell me, hold your bow up here, and tell me a little bit about uh, the part of the bow you're going to talk about. So, what part are you going to talk about? The sights. Okay. Um, the red ones for wait. The green ones for if um you're close up, and the red ones for just in the middle, and the yellow ones for kind of far away. Okay. How do you aim through your sights? What do you have to look through first on your string? This tiny little, um... Peep sight? Yeah. Okay. Two holes on the sides. Yeah, it does you a lot of good. Okay, so you got sights. Uh, Callie, you're going to talk a little bit about the release and your eye patch. So talk a little bit about your release. Uh, well, let's start off first. You got a really interesting uh, eye patch, a pirate patch on your head. What's that for? So if you, like, can't really close your left eye, yep. you can put it down on your eye like this, and when you're shooting, it helps you do that so you don't close your right eye. Yes, it saves me from having to help you hold your eye closed. So the eye patch is very important. You can put it back up. Uh, as cool as it looks, you can keep it up on top of your head. Okay, so tell me a little bit about your release and how you operate it. Um, you know how it releases? Um, it, you have to... Um, you can't actually put your hand on the trigger until you're actually ready to shoot. And when you pull back, the first thing you're going to do is put a, a, your finger right here and then just slide over and touch it. Okay. What's it do? It releases the arrow. And you put it on, like you have to, like you have to untighten it if it's too tight for you. Put your hand in, put your fingers like this. And pull this and put it like that. And uh, it's a kid's one. This from is a kid one? Where did you get yours? At Gary's. Yeah. Gary Alvis helped you out? Sporting on Pond. Okay, so Kale, you have your own mic, so you're going to talk a little bit about the other aspect of the bow, the second part of it, the arrows. I'm a Matthew guy, so <laughs> I have a Matthew's Menace. Team Matthew is okay. Matthew's against PSE. Okay, so uh, talk a little bit about the arrows. Well, put your bow down there a second. We have special wraps. This is Katie's arrow. She has a Tinkerbell one. It's purple. She has a purple wrap. Okay. And then this is, I have two kinds of wraps. This one I customized on the computer. And this one was just from... It's just one we bought at the Hunt and Fishing Show where we're down there visiting with uh, Gary, yep. Gary Elvis. This is Callie. She has a... Rapunzel? Okay, pink Rapunzel. And then this is Mom's bow hunter one. So pretty pink as well? It's purple. It's purple. All right, sorry. Pretty purple. <laughs> so why do we have uh, five different, and if you count mine, six different colors of arrows? Let's say this one's yours. Okay. 
So why do we have? So we can see whose is whose arrows instead of having to pick out the same one and measure them to see how which one goes with each bow. Okay. So yep, it's a good way to identify all our arrows because when all six of us go to shoot, or all five of us go to shoot, I'm sorry. Uh, when all five of us go to shoot, it's very handy to see who shot where and whose arrows they are. Now, why are they bright colored? Like I see you have yellow and so orange. So you can see them, in the, see them, see the bright colors in the grass. Why would your arrows be in the grass? Miss. So if you miss the They're target. They're over in the woods. Yeah, if you miss the target, you got bright colored tips to find. Okay. Um, there, I saw an arrow stuck in a tree somewhere Yep. on the course. Okay. And I remember I shot, I was shooting at a groundhog and a, uh, a target groundhog, yes. And an armadillo target, and I shot right through the top of the tree, but it, and then I had to go grab it out. Yep, had to climb and get your arrow out. Okay, so misses happen, and it's always handy to have bright colored fletching and bright colored wraps so that you can find them. Easily. All right. uh, Cheryl, tell us a little bit about your bow and uh, what's special about it. Um, I have a Matthews Passion. And uh, it's very light. I think it's women specific. So yep. it's lighter and it's shorter and it's just easier for women to handle. Um, one of the things that's different on mine than anyone else's in the family is it has um, the sights are different. I have the sight where you move actually this way. you actually have to move it. So at each target I have to try to gauge how far away the target is and then I have to move my sights. So it makes it a little more um, specific. There you go. So yours has only one pin in it, and then right. you move the back part of the site exactly. to choose your yardage, where everybody else has three or four pins. And mm -hmm. Kale, I think you have five pins to differentiate your yardage. I have 15, and 20, right. 25, and 28. Okay, so, so you I know have your yardage, and then four. you have one pin. Yep. Okay, and I noticed you got a lot of bright colors on your bow, a lot of pink and purple. So Mostly purple, thank you very mostly much. Mostly purple. And, uh, yeah. So... Uh, again, we went down to Gary's Sport Eating Pond, and he helped you pick out a good bow that sure fit did. your yeah. size. Uh, and we had to make some adjustments to fit your draw length. Very important. I think uh, as for our archery tip uh, of the day or this show, the length of the bow is a very important aspect. I know your first bow uh, was also a Matthew, but it was a little long for you. It made it hard to pull. Yeah, it had a, a longer draw length, and it really... I was so stretched out that by the time we got through 20 targets, I was tired. Right. So going to a bow that fit you properly uh, helped your shooting. Absolutely. Okay. So let's talk a, bit, a little bit about the community archery range, the Pinecrest Community Archery Range out of 119 behind the Department of Highways garage. Uh, there's 40 targets. Uh, Katie, what's your favorite target out the archery range? Um, the climbing bear. Okay. What's he look like? He looks like he's just resting on a tree with his hind legs up and his front legs on the tree all right what's your what's the favorite part about it that you like um walking around all these different to all these different places there's different trees where you can peel bark off them when you're waiting for other people to shoot all right so keeping yourself entertained is everyone else shooting Callie what's your favorite target the large deal um with the big tree behind it yeah Sometimes people shoot that if they shoot too high. So if they miss the deer, they hit the big oak tree right behind it. All right, great. Kale, what's your favorite target? The large deer where you have to shoot off a mountain and it goes down to, into a valley. And most of the time I find arrows down. And I know we have some pictures of the archery uh, range. Let's pull those up. Uh, Kale, I believe that's shooting. you're shooting at a turkey right at the end, uh, target 39. Um, what else we got there? Cheryl, is that your favorite target, the big white mountain goat? I do like that one. It's easy to see, um, but probably my favorite is the alligator. Just ah, because yeah. I don't think little unique. I would never be able to shoot an alligator otherwise. And that's kind of a tough downhill shot. So this one, is, this is one of my favorites. It's it's white. It's a really big target. It's tricky because you got to shoot around the tree. Yeah. Um, but it's a it's and a great it's really, little uphill shot. It's in a beautiful spot too with the rock formations. Yep. It's just in a nice valley. Yep, okay. So we have a lot of good stuff. And this photo is, uh, where's this at, girls? I'm in Grandpa's garage. Okay, what are you guys doing over there? Shooting our bows, practicing. Practicing, getting in some good practice. So when the weather's bad, Grandpa puts you up a target. And you guys get in some uh, good target practice. Did, uh, what happens if you miss a target over there? 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, hit his wall. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. What do hit you get? his wall. Grandpa like it when you miss the target and hit the wall? Nope. Did either of you miss the target and hit the wall while you are over there? Uh, yeah. yeah. We missed yes. it. But I've hit it a couple like times, it too. So we're kind of... And one time mom hit it. And one time mom hit it. Yeah, it happens on occasion. Right through the garage. Yeah, mom put some holes in grandpa's garage. So but the rubber mats keep it, it yep. slows it down some. A little bit, okay. Um, so talking about families and community, Cheryl, I'll ask you a question. Why do you think it's so important to have this in our community? Well, first of all, there's a lot of hunters around here. And I think it gives them a, um, a place that's close to home. They don't have to drive an hour and a half to go practice what they like to do. Um, the archery range is based on donation. It's a very small donation. Yeah, I think we ask for a $5 donation, yeah. and all those proceeds go back to supporting the targets and buy new targets when we need them. Absolutely, and, and that's um, it's cheaper than going to the movies. Oh, it'll yeah. probably take you a good two hours, so you get your money's worth. You're outside, you're active. We like to do it because it's a nice family activity that all five of us can enjoy. Um, just fresh air. Yep. Uh, it's, and I think it's, it's really friendly good. for families. We have we do have uh, three uh, pins. We're getting ready to add a fourth one. Mm -hmm. uh, after we've went around and shot a couple of times, we noticed that uh, there needs to be an in-between target. So we have the pink is for probably ages nine and under, and then we have, we're going to put in a women's slash youth. Uh, that'll be in between Purple. that and the bow hunter and then the bow hunter one's more for your average bow hunter uh, Pretty good distance way challenging and then we have the yellow which is kind of uh, For the Saunders and O'Brien's the outlaw pin uh, or the pro pin which makes it very challenging So we'll have four pins out there. Uh, we plan on working on it a little bit tomorrow And putting those out so that you can go stand at them, but uh, of course we always tell you shoot where you're comfortable safety is always a priority so um, looking at all our stuff uh, Kale, would you say you got your bow? Where do we get all our supplies and stuff? I got my arrows and bow at Gary's Sporting Pond. Okay. And Gary, I'd like to put in a plug for Gary. He's a big supporter and helped make this archery range happen. He, uh, he donated a good portion of the funds and helped set this up, worked with us in the community. Uh, and he carries all the bow supplies here for, uh, for us in the Roan County Spencer area. Um, and also all our arrows because we do lose a lot of arrows. Uh, with this crew, everybody out there shooting, so he keeps a good supply of arrows on hand for us. And so if, you, if you lose any, you'll get them back. <laughs> yeah. We have a arrow, if you find any arrows. Lost and found arrow holder out there, yep, yep. okay. And so, the walking trail, you can take your bikes out there and ride, and then there's, you can walk, run, yep. jog. Nice gravel walking trail, it gets a lot of usage down over the hill. So lots of activities out at the Pinecrest Community Park. Uh, and lots of fun stuff to do. So get outside. If you have any questions, you can call us at the patch office at 927 8047. And of course, as I mentioned, we have 40 targets. Uh, we've had 40 businesses in the community sponsor these targets individually, and uh, it's just fantastic. There's lots of targets to go around and shoot. It's a wonderful hike. It's on a beautiful set of property across the hillside, and it's out on Route 119 right behind the Department of Highway Garage. You can see we'll have signs and stuff up and uh, a great walking trail. And, uh, and all that other good stuff. So we're excited about archery. So, Kale, McCutcheon crew, thanks for coming on the show today and talking a little bit about archery and getting outside. And if you have any questions about archery or you need any help, you can always stop down at Gary Sporting uh, Gym. They'll all be more than happy to help you out, help fix you up with a bow, especially with kids. He carries a lot of kids' bows out there, and I would highly recommend you get your kids involved in this. It is a program they teach in schools um, for gym class and especially at the high school. So it's something that you can do for lifelong learning and start them out at an early age. Uh, the girls here start at six. Kale, you've been shooting since you're probably two or three. Um, so I had that see. little yellow bow that I had to pull back <laughs> with my fingers. Yep. And then I've seen it, quite a few people getting out there and walking. Yep. So there's a lot of activity out there. Since the weather's turning good, get out there and get involved. Again, if you have any questions about the archery trail, call us at our office. If you have any questions about archery, I'd encourage you to call uh, Gary Sporting the Pond. Here in Spencer, and uh, and let them help. So, Kale, this show by is sponsored a by A and M Digital Technologies, and we'll see you next time. All right, we'll see you next week. Five minutes outside with Kale, sponsored by A and M Digital Technologies. Thanks bye for watching. Bye, Mom. Pap, pap. Bye, Nana. Bye, Mom. See you later. Love you. <laughs> All right, everybody, have a good week. <laughs>